And this impressive flame is from one of the early demonstrations of this large digester. This is Bill's large propane tank, all set up to load up for the day. A 55 gallon drum at the top, act as a uh, chimney to direct the heat and flames out. This is the hopper delivery system with a large auger inside to deliver the pecan shells up to the top. That is the auger, very impressive auger it is. This is the uh, hopper setup. The bottom of the auger. And there it is, ready to go. Now you could probably turn it on. These are dried pecan shells from an orchard in Arizona. Here I have climbed up to the top of the gasifier hopper system, just putting the excess shells inside and tapping it down a bit. A 55 gallon drum and the auger delivery system. Bill has just put some starter fluid in it to ignite the system. The E85 that gas a hole. Oh yeah? It's 85% ethanol. Oh yeah? Not as strong, you know, not a, not quite as volatile. And, and zero, virtually no odor from it. Alcohol is even better, but that's extremely expensive. Hand me a stick to stir this with. Here's a shot of the bottom motor on the auger delivery system that takes the finished biochar from the gasifier up through here into that 55 gallon drum. He uses uh, computer fans for his air distribution system. He uses a very, very low amount of electricity. Here's a dimmer switch. And here's some fans with those tubes going up into the bottom part of the gas fire digester. Here's a few shots of his control panel and fan setup that feed into the bottom of the digester. He can adjust those fans for the amount of air he needs for good combustion. Well, look at that, man. That is really kicking now. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, it's been escaping air in there. You right? got flames, yeah. boy. Now it's blowing up. Now we probably will when it turns off. Yeah, it's slow. Normal combustion time for these uh, digesters is about one hour per foot. So this large digester took six hours. What is it you're doing, Bill? I'm just. Um, squirting water in here. He adds water after the combustion and to cool the biochar down so it doesn't keep combusting. Again he sprays biochar down to keep it from further combusting also to take care of that fine dust which is highly carcinogenic. Also biochar is in the perfect timing to have the water added to it which prepares it to go into the earth. Now here, here, come over and you, 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 hold, you hold the water because I'm going to have to get over there and you'll have to tell me when to shut it off. Yeah, yeah. You want me to hold the water? If you like to do that. So what are we spraying? Is this is the part that's coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the stuff down there? Yeah. Okay, because it's still hot. You're going to say it loud enough I can hear you. Yeah, Bill. Okay.
Let me shake it. Maybe you add a little more. That is enough, Adelaide. Uh, uh, Adelaide, you know, you need to shake it a little more. Yeah. More water? Yeah. Oh, wow. Now you can pump. We originally put five 55 gallon drums worth of pecan shells in the hopper, and we came out with two and a half 55 gallon drums of this finished biochar. It's not very dirty. So would you call this pure charcoal? Yeah. Pure charcoal. Yeah, no, the, the stuff, the general rule is that the stuff they use for barbecuing, they leave more of the volatiles in. Somebody should start suffling some of this around. And, and flavor in those uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. This is our finished biochar being put into five gallon buckets to be taken over the line into Palomas, Mexico to help with some needed gardening projects over there. So there's a quick overview of Bill's amazing biochar gasifier.